Mohammedan leaders and many in the media, politicians, and Christian religious leaders tell the world that Islam means peace and it is a tolerant and peaceful religion. How can they say these things when every single day we see and hear about acts of terror committed by the followers of Muhammad in the name of Allah all over the world and invariably against defenseless civilians? Are they being politically correct or hiding their heads in the sand? What are the facts based on the Muhammadan Muslim records? One can easily understand why the Muhammadan leaders would want to deceive and mislead people about the facts regarding Muhammadan Islam. After all, they have their agenda of converting, subjugating or annihilating all human beings who do not believe as they do, as we have shown in our previous chapters. What is absolutely sickening, sycophantic and disgusting are our political and religious leaders as well as the media who are doing their worst to misrepresent the facts in the name of cultural diversity, political correctness, and or stable relations between unbelievers and believers. The Christian religious leaders in particular show an incredible degree of cowardice and subservience vis-à-vis -vis the followers of Muhammad. Let us look at the facts and reality. The Christians are publicly and regularly persecuted, discriminated against, murdered, enslaved, or exiled in almost every single Muhammadan country. For example, Iraq, so-called Palestine, Pakistan, Sudan, Egypt, Algeria, Nigeria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Kuwait, Afghanistan, etc., etc., etc. And yet, rarely do the Christian leaders, the media, or our politicians mention these acts, and when they do, it is in whispers or in small print. Contrary to the image painted by his followers as a man of peace, kindness, and compassion, the hadith records as corroborated by the relevant verses in the Quran show Muhammad as a man full of hate, spite and vengeance, a political theocratic person with an incredible degree of intolerance when contradicted or satirized and with utter contempt for the lives of those he perceived as his enemies. Muhammad repeatedly ordered his followers to commit acts of treason, deception and murder while he himself refrained from doing his own dirty work. He acted as and was, in reality, the head of the first organized crime syndicate in history. Muhammad was the precursor of the mafia bosses who do their best not to be directly implicated in any and all criminal acts, but leave it to their underlings to do so. The following are just a few such instances as verified and attested to by Muhammad and historians. 1. Muhammad ordered the murder of any and all of his political, theological and satirical opponents, male or female, young or old, free or slave, without mercy or compassion, and they were invariably tricked to their deaths and murdered when unarmed, such as the cases of Abu Afaq, 120 years old, who criticized Muhammad in verse for the murder of Al-Harith bin Samad. Muhammad demanded his murder. Two. Asma bint Marwan of Medina, who satirized Muhammad after having had Afaq murdered, was his next victim. Once again, he had one of his followers commit the nefarious deed. Who will rid me of Marwan's daughter? At which Umair al-Khatmi immediately crept into her house and murdered her. On his return, he confirmed that he had killed her, at which Muhammad was greatly pleased and said to him, You have greatly helped Allah and his apostle, O Umair. 3. Kaab Ibn al-Ashraf of Medina, Sahih al-Bukhari 4.168. The Prophet said, Who is ready to kill Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf? Muhammad bin Maslama replied, Do you like me to kill him? The Prophet replied in the affirmative. Muhammad bin Maslama said, Then allow me to say what I like. The Prophet replied, I do. 4. Qurayza tribesmen. 5. Khaybar settlement. 6. The Meccan 10. 7. Kinana of Khaybar. 8. Muslims of Orayna. Ibn Ishaq Sirat Rasulullah is full of rage sanctioned by Muhammad to betray, despoil, ambush, and murder his opponents. Abu Afaq, Asma bint Marwan, Ka'b bin al-Ashraf, Qinana of Khaybar, and most of the above murdered men and women, young and old, were never a threat to Muhammad or to his movement. They were, nonetheless, the only living conscience that was left in Arabia to oppose such a wanton liar and mass murderer. Al-Imran 3.151 Soon we shall strike terror into the hearts of the infidels. Allah, 
the compassionate, the merciful, is siding with Muhammad against his own creation, whom he had already predestined to err. There are hundreds of such verses permeating the surahs of the Qur'an. Al-Anfal 8.12 I shall terrorize the infidels. Bukhari 5.401 Allah's wrath became severe on anyone the Prophet killed in Allah's cause. It is not enough for Muhammad's Allah to cause the death of his predestined creatures, but Allah has even more wrath to inflict upon the innocent victims. Al-Anfal 8.67 it is not fitting for any prophet to have prisoners until he has made a great slaughter in the land. Al-Ahzab 33.61 The infidels shall have a curse on them. Whenever they are found, they shall be seized and slain without mercy. A fierce slaughter, murdered, a horrible murdering. Bukhari 5.397 Allah revealed, Your Lord will send thousands of angels riding upon chargers, sweeping down as a form of good tidings to reassure you that victory comes from him. He will cut off parts of the unbelievers, overthrow them, and turn them back in frustration, for Allah is forgiving and kind. According to the Quran and Hadiths, Muhammad and his followers could never win a single battle without the help of Allah and his angels of death. With such slaughter and decapitation, which part of the above hadith represents Allah's forgiveness or kindness? Bukhari 4220, Allah's Apostle said, I have been made victorious with terror. Bukhari 4.256, the Prophet was asked whether it was permissible to attack infidels at night with the probability of exposing their women and children to danger. The Prophet replied, their women and children are from them. Muhammad was an equal opportunity predator. He could not show any mercy or compassion to any and all who did not believe as he did. His followers, even at the present time after the lapse of 1400 years, exhibit the same unrestrained, hate-mongering and war-mongering characteristics all over the world. They are, after all, his perfect clones. Bukhari 5.516 When Allah's Apostle fought or raided people, we raised our voices shouting, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. As we witnessed at the present, the followers of Muhammad recite this terror verse before slaughtering their defenseless victims. Bukhari 5.702 regarding Ghazwat al-Badr. In fact, Allah's apostle had only gone out in search of the Quraysh caravan so that he can rob it. Bukhari 7.115 narrated by Ibn Umar. During the lifetime of the Prophet, we used to avoid chatting leisurely and freely with our wives that some divine inspiration might be revealed concerning us. But when the Prophet had died, we started chatting leisurely and freely with them. It should never be a surprise to any thinking person as to why the followers of Muhammad all over the world exhibit such incredible and unbridled hatred of all those who do not follow their creed. They are, after all, only emulating the Qur'an and Muhammad's sunnah as he had instructed them to do before he died. Ishaq 288, the Quraysh said, Muhammad and his companions have violated the sacred month, shed blood, seized property, and taken men captive. Ishaq 326, if you come upon them, deal so forcibly as to terrify those who would follow, that they may be warned. Make a severe example of them by terrorizing Allah's enemies. Allah said, no prophet before Muhammad took booty from his enemy, nor prisoners for ransom. Even according to the records of the Muhammadans, only Muhammad was a terrorist, plundering, and booty-seeking prophet. I honestly do not have the stomach to continue reciting any further morbid and ungodly examples. Those of our listeners who want to know more should read them at their leisure on our website.